Well hello again and um, I'm back sitting on the sea lion boat today. I've come down, uh, it, it is actually sort of raining so I'd, I'd come down with the intention of um, giving it a bit of a clean up on the outside and it's just come on to rain again so um, I thought I'd continue on. Um, first of all thank you to all those that have looked at the last video um, where I talk about my views on probably buying a smaller, cheaper GRP boat. I'll put a link uh, in down below um, to that video if you haven't seen that and you're interested in my thoughts uh, on buying a GPR boat um, for the canals and um, rivers in, in the UK. As I said before, I, I have, um, I'm no expert. All I can offer is many, many years experience of this kind of boat. Uh, last time I looked at the size, dimensions and that kind of thing and this time I thought I'd have a quick little video and look at uh, forms of propulsion. You know obviously you want to buy a boat, you'll want to take it somewhere and obviously you will need some sort of engine in the boat or on the boat. So basically um, there's, as I see it at the moment in time, for this kind of boat, there's really three defining kinds of engines you can have. You can have uh, an inboard diesel, such as this boat has got, rather a large one, more too too big really for the for the inland rivers and canals. But you, an inboard diesel engine, which obviously most steel narrow boats, well virtually that you know the whole steel narrow boat fraternity. Um, have diesel engines, but GRP boats do come in, you know, um, inboard diesel engine form. Then you can have, um, and this relates to may maybe quite a few of the older, um, so if you're sort of looking at the bargain end bottom basement boats, you can buy um, canal boats with inboard petrol engines. Um, which I'll come on to in a moment. And then the third option is uh, an outboard motor, obviously, which fits on the transom um, and is not in taking up the cabin room. It is, it is an engine, outboard engine mounted on the transom. And obviously then that can be a four stroke or a two stroke. And obviously that runs on petrol. Um, what do I favor? Well, it would have to be said, um, naturally the last couple of boats I've owned have been diesel engine powered boats, which I've always got on well with um, and I like. Um, that doesn't mean to say I've also had inboard petrol engine boats. Um, several things to look at, re-petrol on boats. Um, if it's treated right, it can be a safe fuel. I don't have any worries with that. Obviously, the older, you know, um, I'm thinking of some Freeman boats, some Seamaster boats. Um, in fact, many makes um, going back into the 60s and 70s, which are still out there and you can buy them, still have their original engines, which were um, small inboard, you know, petrol engines. The Freeman. Uh, boat range, the smaller Freeman, like the Freeman 22, the Freeman 23, some of the Freeman 24s even, uh, a lot of those use the water motor range of marinized Ford engines. Uh, basically the smaller of those engines were the 1100 um, cross-flow escort engine and predating that, going back into the 60s, they were the um, Ford Anglia, the 105E engine, I believe, and the 100E engine, which are still out there, and, and you know, you, they still fitted in Freemans, and you can still buy them. Um, obviously, uh, if you do opt for a petrol version boat, um, the one difficulty that I see now uh, particularly on the inland system, that's the rivers and canals that we're talking about here mainly, is sadly uh, there's very few outlets now on the river that sell petrol. 
uh, obviously the, the rules and regulations of selling petrol and what you need and the tanks and such like and you have to have them pressure tested every so often and blah de blah blah and most marinas have given petrol up um, I think on this river I say we're on the River Neen here in Northamptonshire there is only one marina at Oundle and I think I'm not 100% sure but I think they still actually will do have a petrol pump and sell petrol there but that is the only outlet on the whole river from right from when you come onto the river at the Northampton Arm at Northampton going right down to Peterborough and interestingly enough a few years ago some friends of mine uh, decided to move their little Freeman 22 which had the inboard petrol engine from Oundle right up to the Coventry Canal um, in Warwickshire and obviously they found this quite an issue and I, I hadn't thought about this you know when you're going any distance um, because the lack of fuel was you know um, at night they were probably having to walk around with you know um, a five litre jerry can or two five litre jerry cans to try and find a garage which isn't easy if you don't know a location I mean garages have shut down left right and centre and only in certain locations now um, in fact their situation got so bad that they had to call on um, their father-in-law to come and meet them every evening and he bought them petrol and they did it that way so obviously that is a big concern um, where you're going to buy your fuel um, obviously you can get around these things as I say with mobile phones you know and Google Maps and all the rest you can soon find where a garage is and there are garages close by to rivers and canals so it's not the end of the world but it's something to bear in mind you're not going to be able to buy a fuel as you can de I can buy diesel here at this marina um, there's plenty of places on the river that still sell diesel and naturally on the canal um, you know vir virtually every marina and uh, boatyard has some sort of facility to sell diesel um, so that's widely available so that's one great issue that I feel that if you opt for the outboard motor or the inboard petrol engine obviously there is, there is also um, one has to look at it um, from the safety angle um, obviously petrol is highly combustible and I think what a lot of people often forget is that um, petrol vapours are heavier than air so it's the vapour that is the dangerous not the actual liquid it's the vapour that's coming off the petrol fuel that is the danger and obviously things to look out for is when you're refueling a boat, when you're tipping petrol into it, out of a can, say, if you have to refuel it that way, always make sure that the hood is up, the canopy is up, because otherwise the, the vapours can sink down into the bilges, and obviously as soon as you turn that start key, that causes a spark, and if there's any petrol vapour that has sunk down into the bilges, it, it could theoretically explode. So, you know, and I would say also on petrol engine boats fit a little bilge blower that sucks that's a fan it's a spark guarded fan that obviously you turn on before you turn the engine on and that vents any fumes out of the engine space and it's vented out to the outside of the boat I would certainly think about fitting one of those Probably outboards aren't quite so bad because you have a separate tank that you can see that's a, that's you know fits there again on the transom round about the transom of the boat, so you can see if you've got any leaks or any problems or you know I mean the one thing about petrol is you can soon smell it. When I had a petrol engine boat, when my Freeman I, I had two Freemans with petrol engine boats, a 23 and a 22. Um, before I started them up. It was very easy. I would just lift the seats up where the en where the engine inboard engine was, and have a smell, and just have a quick check with it. You know, um, look round the engine and make sure. And I would do that every time, even if I'd stopped the lock um, or I'd switched the engine off. And every time I switched the engine off, it's it's no big deal really. Just to 
just to do that, um, just to make sure, um, because obviously fuel lines, carburettors, some of these boats are sort of 40, 50 years old. Um, you know, think things break and happen, you know, so there's also you, you could fit a vapor alarm. You can get like gas and vapor alarms that you fit so that an audible warning, you know, if, if you have any leakage and audible warning sounds, you know, you can go down that route if it concerns you. But obviously, um, with diesel engines, you don't have that problem. You know, diesel is diesel fuel is a lot safer in some respects, although it, it still burns. Um, and um, obviously, um, diesel engines uh, were years ago when these smaller built, built sort of GRP boats were built were expensive, and there weren't the small diesel engines around then. Um, in fact, a classic example of that is the Freeman Twenty Three. Uh, GRP boat. Some of those were fitted, fitted with a Perkins um, 4108 diesel engine. Well that engine was so big that they had to, it, it fitted under the dinette in the cabin the engines do on Freemans and the engine was so big that it came up so much that they had to cut a, um, a vent or an, an area out of the foam um, it was, I mean, Freeman's had quite thick foam seats, but they had to cut a bit of the foam out and, and make a glass fibre uh, moulded um, top, if you like, because the engine was so big and that was the only way they could get it to fit in. Um, obviously, things have moved on. A lot of people, I, I went down the route um, of actually ripping uh, a little. 1100cc Ford water motor out of my Freeman 22 and replacing it with a brand new diesel engine um, which is quite an interesting operation to do it's quite straightforward in some ways it can be more difficult depending on which boat you buy um, but realistically the cost of that um, unless I, I kept that boat 10 years I had that boat 10 years um, but I, I, when I did sell the boat, in the end, I never got the return of doing all that work. Or the, I mean, I think the engine cost to buy the engine, and this was sort of 12, 13, 14 years ago now, the engine was about £4,500. And I did a lot of the fitting work myself, virtually all the fitting work myself. Um, I just had it properly aligned and some um, new engine bearers put in. Um, I think it was. I think I had about five hundred pounds work of uh, outside work done that I couldn't do or didn't think I was capable of doing. Um, but I mean, altogether, I perhaps spent six thousand pounds on that project, which that probably that uh, at best on a good day that Freeman Twenty Two was only worth seven and a half thousand pounds um, with a diesel or petrol, you know. Um, I think when I sold it, I did get eight and a half thousand for it because it had got the new engine, and somebody kind of fell in love with it, and it was in very good condition as well, and which helps obviously. So you know, I would never buy a boat um, because obviously people buy GRP boats, often starter boats, and want to move on pretty quickly to something bigger or something different, or and then obviously the, the viability of putting a new diesel engine in uh, on a smaller boat is you know beyond the bounds of you know cost efficiency really it might be different on an arrow boat um that might be something because obviously um you're you're probably adding to the life of the boat um but on a grp boat it doesn't seem to make a lot of difference you know um so as i i favor diesel because that's what i've been used to the last couple of boats um it's 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 Good to work on it can be a touch smelly it does have its downside you know you've got to be careful you've got to keep everything clean um, and obviously um, but they're relatively easy to work on um, most of the marine engines parts are readily, readily available um, there's plenty of people out there to help you if you do get you know stuck with the smaller marine diesel engines um, most boatyards will have somebody that you know or 
it's very basic um, engineering still it's you know not very high tech it's mainly if you do have problems it's you know something like water in the fuel or something like this you know if you service them once a year you know new oil put new oil in them change the filters um, and you know just generally look after them they're they're pretty straightforward realistically so, so that, that's my view um, Obviously, um, cost has come into it. You know, a smaller GRP, perhaps with a petrol engine or an outboard motor, um, is going to be probably cheaper to buy than one with a diesel engine. Um, but it's, uh, as I said before, I think the key, my key advice uh, about buying a smaller GRP boat is have a look at as many boats. As you can you know try and define what you're looking for to start with what size width height to fit the waterway that you you're on check out all the details obviously you know and if you want to go on the canals make sure that it's a narrow beam it's not too high for the bridges obviously on this river we have a about um, seven foot two seven foot four restriction you know the there's some very low bridges on the river Neen. Um, so as I make sure, then then get a defined idea what you're looking for, and then start looking round at the boats. Um, and as I say, then you can look and go and have a look at different engine combinations, you know, outboards, which I say will be petrol um, or inboard petrols or diesels, and, and have a look, you know, see what you think. Um, uh, you know, um, as I say, I, I run, um, I had a Freeman 23 for many, many years, and that had the original, um, that had a, um, a water motor cross flow 1300 uh, petrol engine, which which ran beautifully. It um, it never gave any problems. It was easy to service. The parts um, parts for these older engines are still out there. Um, if I think of the, just as instance, because I know them so well, the Freeman range, the Freeman boats, um, there's Sheridan line down at Molesford on the Thames. They stock so many bits and pieces as do other places for these older engines um so you know don't be put off by this the age of the engine um because realistically some of these engines have had very very little use in that 50 years say you know um grp boats seem to spend vast majority of their lives moored up in marinas and there again in the 70s and 80s and 60s, 60s, 70s and 80s, nobody boated in the winter. Boats more than likely came out of the water. That perhaps isn't the case so much now. People are using their boats more and boats stay on the water at certain locations as well throughout the year. But years ago, you know, it was a seasonal thing, you know, sort of April to the end of October, early November, and then the boats were lifted out. Um, so these boats, have, these boat engines have very little use, uh, or have had very little use, I should say. So, um, yeah, um, as I say, just looking at those key points again, um, read the petrol outboard, which there again, size, you can go from a four horsepower up to a, you know, God knows how many hundred horsepower in outboards these days. The... Um, I would certainly recommend the Honda range, the Honda four-stroke outboards. If you're looking, you know, at a boat with an outboard, I think they're very good. I mean, I've seen a lot of Honda outboards on the Viking um, range of Canal and River GRP cruisers. Um, so as a Honda brilliant engine, lovely and quiet, um, seems very reliable, very fuel efficient. Um, so that's probably sort of one to look at if you are going down the route, you know, but um, there's, there's many, many makes out there. And as I, I think I think that's the basis to have a have a good look round and define what you're after um, in all things, not only cabin and boat size, but engine as well, you know, and, and do have a look, you know, have a look at them running. And, you know, a lot of people think diesel engines in a GRP cruiser can be very noisy, as they can be, particularly if the engine is forward into the cabin area. Um, whereas an outboard motor right at the back of the boat, say, uh, a four-stroke outboard is very quiet, sort of like a 10 or 15 horsepower or a 20 horsepower Honda is very quiet these days. And um, as I say, very fuel efficient. So, um, yeah, um, you know, and um, I think 
really safety angle that, that petrol brings you know just just be careful with it you know I don't think there's any need to go overboard with it just just always you know as I say realize you know there are certain things to be careful of and just follow those instructions so particularly when you're refueling or when you're starting off particularly from cold when you go to the boat just always check the you know lift the engine come and have a look can you smell fuel in a diesel as well as a petrol I would recommend that um, and um, it's very straightforward you know and it will probably give you many many years um, serviceability and like I said these engines are very very basic and very very easy to maintain yourself you know um, there are coming on to looking at engines I mean you can join the canal and river rescue which is a bit like the waterborne AA or RAC um, it, obviously you pay so much a year you can be a, I think it's a, a gold bronze or silver member and that entitles you to um, break down cover so if you get to somewhere and you're middle, in the middle of a lock and the engine won't start you can just get on your mobile phone and within a certain time limit uh, an engineer will come from um, Canal and River Rescue and get you moving again or um, I, I think they offer various options they can even tow you if, if it's you know to a nearest boatyard if it's not possible to um, get the engine fixed or whatever um, so yeah there's, there's loads of options out there but as I, I think it's crucial that um, you have a look round and um, decide what you want and is best for you as I say um, to me that as I say as I've explained earlier the defining thing I think with petrol now is the limitation of buying fuel on the inland waterways in, in the UK um, you're going to have to realize that you are going to have to go out probably and buy from garages and you're going to have to find those on the route which as I say is, isn't you know probably wouldn't be a great issue um, I don't know I've never done that um, I've only it's only what people have told me recently that obviously this can be problematical um, because obviously you don't want I, I think the um, boat safety certificate ruling you can only store one jerry one five litre plastic jerry petrol can of petrol on board and I don't think you'd want any more you know you, you um, uh, obviously you know you've got a if you've got a petrol inboard you've got a defined petrol tank which on the Freeman range I think held between sort of 15 and 20 gallons and um, and that, that was enough that that would have get you a fair way anyway be put off by the fact these these boats and engines are very old um, you know we're, we're talking about boats here still they're still Freeman's there's still there's still Freeman Mark ones from from the late fifties and early sixties uh, out there on our rivers, you know, and they've still got the original engines. Um, so you know, um, don't be put off by that. Um, and I think it's, you know, as I say, defining what suits you best and your sort of cruising. You know, if you're going to do mm, many miles cruising, you want to start here and go right off around as much of the waterways as you can well in that respect you know you might be better off looking for a diesel engine boat because obviously that's more widely available and easy to um, find on the waterways so um, yeah there we go that's my little thoughts on that um, for what it's worth um, thank you for all the um, uh, some people asked some very valid questions on, on the last one. Um, I will answer those in another um, video. I mean, several people have asked me about my thoughts on living on a GRP boat. Is it possible to live, you know, 52 weeks on the on a GRP boat? Um, well, I hope um, in a future video, maybe to interview somebody that does that uh, to answer those questions. Um, or I will go and interview them and, and you know I've never done that um, and I know several people that do do that or have done that so um, I'll be looking at that in another video um, and um, you know occasionally I'll do one of these series and, and look at different aspects of um, as I say my thoughts on buying a smaller and when I say smaller GRP boat I mean something say from 20 foot maybe up to a maximum of 30 foot and 
as I think I said in my last video, no more than £20,000 in price, you know, probably a lot, lot more, less than that. You can still buy a little Freeman 22 from, say, five to six to seven thousand pounds, and that will get you, you know, up and away on the rivers. Um, and, and they're a great little boat and very reliable and well built. Um, so, yeah, thanks for watching. Um, as always, please, please do subscribe. Um, and um, if you have any questions, do comment and ask. Um, I'm happy to try and answer any questions if I can. And um, yeah, and thanks very much again. And we'll be back with another video very soon. And until then, bye for now.